Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome to Inspired by the Quran series. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, "Ahasiba an-nas an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun." وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَا يَعْلَمُنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمُنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in the Quran that do the people think that if they believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala they will be left alone Allah says that وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ do they think that they will not be tested against their iman وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ and those who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before us, they were also tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ الصَّدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it known the truth of those who are true and the falsehood of those who are liars. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمَ حَسِبَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ أَنْ يَسْبِقُونَ And do they think those people who get up to wrongdoings, do they think that they, they can escape from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Sa'ama yahkumun. Evil is what they judge. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clearly telling us that if we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we make the declaration that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our iman will be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before us, their iman was also tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the test may be different from people to people, from time to time and from place to place. So the test may be different for different people, for different time and for different place. And therefore it is very important for us to understand what is the nature of our test. How will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test our iman in our time? Because if we do not understand how our iman is tested in our time, then we will not be able to prepare ourselves for the test. And if we do not prepare ourselves for the test, then we will not be able to pass the test. So therefore, it is very important that we try to understand what are the different tests that we are facing as believers, as Muslims in our life. There are many tests and many people will be facing different types of tests. But if we focus on a couple of points or some of the tests that we may be facing in our time, if we look at us individuals, that us individuals may be facing some tests, our families may be facing some different tests, and our society may be facing different tests. So if we look at us individuals, we find that you know it is quite difficult for us to actually do the right thing. So doing the right thing is not that easy. Making the smart move in life is also not that easy. And that is because there are so many paths and in fact there are so many deceptions. So Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ That the life of this world is nothing but a deception. So therefore we get deceived by different deceptions in life. As a result we cannot do the right thing. We cannot make the right move in our life. And therefore we end up bec becoming losers in this world and in the hereafter. So therefore, being able to do the right thing and making the right move which will enable us and which will make us successful in this world and in the hereafter is very crucial. Likewise, our families also face many challenges, many tests. There are so many family conflicts, marital discourse, our children may be going, uh, going astray. These are some of the challenges that our families are facing. And if we look at some of the issues within our family life, family conflicts, marital discord, conflict between a husband and a wife, and this could stem from, or the underlying reasons could be because of individualism, that we have become 
so individualistic that we are only focusing on ourselves. Our life is very much self-centered life. Our life and our attitude towards life is very self-centric. So therefore we are only focusing on ourselves. We have become individualists. We don't have that collective feeling. We don't have that attitude to look after the collective family and, and the society. And therefore because of that individualism, it could be that they, you know, nobody needs anybody. So there is no need for reliance upon other family members. There is also not much or not major financial difficulties in this society. So therefore, because of, of those things, we may not be dependent on other family members or we may not be needing help and support from other family members. And the society and the social system that we live in and the absolute freedom that we have also fostered these attitudes of individualism, self-centered life, self-centric attitude in our life. On the other hand, our children may be going astray, going astray. Our children may be caught up with drugs, with antisocial behaviors, with many other problems. And therefore, to be able to strike a balance between the success in this life and success in the hereafter is quite challenging. So our children are at risk. The material success is also quite challenging for our children to gain material success. The moral compass is also very shaky. Our ethics, our values, our faith. So our children to have strong foundation of ethics, values and faith is also quite challenging for them. On the other hand, if we look at the society, we also have many challenges, many tests that we are facing within the society. The rise of right-wing or far-right ideologies, popularism, white supremacy, religious extremism. All these are also challenges that we are facing in our society. And it could be that some of the challenges we are fa facing, whether the Brexit issue or the Trump government issue, all these things are also increasing racial tension, religious tension, and therefore these religious tensions and racial tensions will also increase. And recently we are seeing the ban on religious dress, and therefore people also becoming fanatics, extremists, because of different ideologies. Now anyone taking an extreme position in life whether it is because of their religion or because of other supremacy ideologies. Any extreme position is not helpful. It is detrimental. And therefore anyone committing extremist acts, terrorist acts, is also to be condemned. And anyone killing any civilians is terrorism. It is being terrorist. There's someone being terrorist Killing civilians is not allowed in any religion. So therefore, anyone killing any civilians is extremism, is terrorism. Whether it is based on any supremacy ideologies or any religion, it is to be condemned. Whether it is done by any lonely cowards or it is committed by an elected president, we have to be balanced and fair in our condemnation. We have to condemn terrorism and extreme activities of individuals and of governments in any society. Because any civilian do not deserve to be killed and to be harmed by individuals or by elected presidents and governments. And if we are not fair in condemnation, then again we will see the repercussion of that. Because nobody should be harmed and nobody should be killed innocently. Muslims, non-Muslims. We are also facing other challenges through which our Iman is being tested. So the challenge of atheism, the challenge of gender relations, the challenge of human nature.
we are being tested through those different issues and we are grappling with those issues in our community in our society so the whole issue of atheism is a big test for believers uh, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore we should be able to grapple with those issues and pre present um, mature and, and sensible answers to these these uh, challenges um, we're also facing the challenge of uh, gender relations and there are many issues related to that in terms of uh, uh, opportunities in terms of responsibilities and again we should be able to grapple with those issues um, and and deal with those issues in a fair way um, so that both gender play a positive and active role in, in, in becoming su successful in both worlds, in this world and in the hereafter. Um, we are also facing challenge of uh, human nature and of course there are different beliefs and different practices um, hum uh, in terms of human nature, um, our nature, our sexuality, uh, the relationship between men and men, women and women. Um, transgender all those different issues are also quite uh, challenging from an islamic perspective now it is very important for us to understand that we can be tolerant but yet differ with other beliefs and practices we can be respectful but yet differ with other beliefs and practices there's nothing wrong with differing as long as we know we differ uh, with with respect and, and 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 through tolerance and it's important that you know we all have our freedom um, freedom to be believe in, in in certain things and practice practice certain certain things so those who believe in Islam you know they will believe in certain things and their, their practice will be different from those who do not believe in Islam and do not uh, practice Islam um, so it's all about us coming together uh, respecting each other's beliefs and practices um, and and being tolerant so that you know we can live respectfully in, um, in, in this world and therefore when we look at those challenges that are being faced by us individuals, our families, our children, our society. These are our tests and our challenges. And our Iman will be tested and will be challenged. And therefore, we have to remain steadfast. We have to understand our Iman and the requirements of our, of our Iman. And we have to be people of steadfastness, people of fairness, people of justice, people of goodness and therefore we should be striving towards a better life in this world and a success in the hereafter. Whatever happens in life, we all will die one day and we will be returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man kana yarju liqa Allah those of us who want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that time is coming we will be meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah hears everything and Allah knows everything so therefore we should be preparing ourselves with our Iman and strengthening our Iman and doing goodness doing the, the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world and preparing ourselves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter so that we gain success in this world and in the hereafter. And if we work hard and if we try our best, then it is for our own self. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِي See, if we work hard, if we strive for goodness, we are only doing it for our own selves. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيُّنَ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah is not in need of our struggle. Let us try to strive for goodness in this life and for the hereafter. And let us, let us promote goodness, fairness and justices in this life. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله ولكم أسمعين السلام عليكم.